we have had a good look at the concept of tissues. So how do we define them? Yes, in simple words, tissues are a group of similar cells performing the same function. We have also taken a look at the fact that tissues in plants and animals are completely different. On one hand, plants require two types of tissues, ones which are constantly dividing and the others which have attained maturity and do not divide further. On the other hand, in case of animals, we have tissues which grow only to a certain extent and then mature and perform the same single function throughout their lives. They are all well synchronized to work with proper division of labor. So now let's have a quick glance at these tissues found in both plants and animals. Beginning with plant tissues first, we classify them based on their dividing and non-dividing nature. The ones that constantly divide throughout the life of plants are called the meristematic tissues. These help in the growth of plants in various ways. Depending upon the location, we classify meristematic tissues as apical meristem, lateral meristem and intercalary meristem. The next in the list would be those tissues which have lost their capacity to divide. These are the permanent tissues. These tissues help the plant to perform various activities but don't contribute to its growth. We can classify them further depending upon the cells present in them. First category is where we have all the cells to be of the similar type. These are the simple permanent tissues. According to their functions, they are classified into three types. Firstly, parenchyma that acts as a filler. It sometimes gets modified to have air cavities and is called the orenchyma or maybe it can have chlorophyll integrated which makes up the chlorenchyma located in the green parts of the plant. Next in the list is the calenchyma which works to give flexibility to the plant. And lastly, we have the sclerenchyma that functions to give rigidity and strength to the plant. After these simple tissues, we move on to the complex tissues. Here we have the vascular bundle system that takes up the responsibility of transportation. So for transporting water and minerals in only the upward direction, we have the xylem. Xylem is made up of four major components, tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Similarly, for the transport of food, we have the phloem to help the plant. It is also made up of four major types of cells. That is the sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. The most unique characteristic of phloem is that it can pass the substances in both the directions. Well, this was a general idea about the various tissues found in plants. Now let's have a look at the tissues found in animals. In animals, we categorize the various tissues based on their major collective function. So the four major functions include protection or covering, connection, movement and locomotion and transmission of signals. Accordingly, we have the major types of epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. The different types of epithelia include simple squamous epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium, cuboidal epithelium and lastly glandular epithelium. Similarly, various types of connective tissues include bones, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, areola, adipose and also blood. Next in this list is the muscular tissue which consists of three major types that is the striated muscles, unstriated or smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles. And lastly we have the nervous tissue that is made up of magical cells called the neurons. These are responsible for transmitting the signals in the form of electrical impulses. All these together work in a synchronized manner and help us perform the various functions efficiently.